Thanks for tuning in to the video on irishracing.com. Today I'm heading to Willie Mullins' yard to get updates all of his stars for the coming Punchstown Festival. Punchstown is maybe this maybe slightly later this year than yeah. normal. Like it, it gives you a good chance to it, it does mean it gave us a great chance this year to actually do Aintree as well and back to Punchestown with a couple of the horses. That's good if these festivals can just move that week apart. It gives, gives everyone a chance to see the better horses racing more often in my view, you know, and so it should be, uh, it should be done more uh, if we can do it. And, um, give the racing public more of a chance to see the top horses. Willie, um, Gaelic Warriors form got a huge boost. He was impressive at Cheltenham, but what happened at Aintree even more so now? Yeah, I mean, he looks, um, he looks, you know, he always looks very, very good, but now that, as you say, that form got a huge boost and um, it, it'll be nice going to Punchestown with that. Uh, but I think he holds an entry in Sandown so, yeah, I think so. We'll see how things go. Um, oh yeah, we'll see how things go. But uh, I'd like to go to Punchestown with them. I think. Yeah, Warrior, you wouldn't have done the likes of that too often in the past, but at the end of the season, from the now into open company. No, um, it's not something I like doing. But maybe this year um, yeah, we might have to. But you know, El Fabiolo will be there, and maybe he'll be enough. So. He'll definitely, I think he's going to, um, he's definitely going to stand down. Do you think Gaelic Tom underperformed at Cheltenham or is it just proving how strong Gaelic Warrior form was, his performance nature? I don't think he underperformed. Um, I just think he's learning all the time, maturing, racing better, it's settling. He's, set, he's learning how to settle over fences, whereas he didn't over hurls and he didn't early in the season. He was just doing his racing too far out but I thought in the entry he settled well and jumped well and he's becoming more the finished article and it's taken him a while and looking at Ilya Toms he's not what one would traditionally call a big staying chaser but I think as he goes further out in trip he's going to be better you know he's only about 16 hands maybe maybe one 16 one and he's a French type horse he's narrow uh, without being a big strap and three mile chaser, but he's able to perform up to grade one standard and, and beat those horses. So um, I just thought when I saw him walking around the parade ring in Aintree, I've never seen a horse move so well. And I'm thinking, wow, uh, you know, if, if I don't know whether there are shots on the TV of him walking in the parade ring, but the way he uh, was striding out just at the walk, covering so much ground hugely impressed me before the race so did I, I hadn't minded him walking like that for a long while so obviously the little break he got after Cheltenham and he just relaxed and he was so relaxed as well in the parade ring. If you want to see how a horse should walk get get the footage of him walking around the parade ring in Aintree it was just I haven't seen a horse do that for ages you might see them at the sales so maybe flatter tracks left-handed well Shelton was left-handed, but um, he obviously performed well twice, uh, twice in Leprechaun and now in Aintree. So maybe just a flatter surface does do it for him, and maybe a little better ground as well. Yeah. Well, anyway. how hard will it be for Galloping Deshaun at Punchtown after the season he's had and after the World Cup on that ground? Well, yeah, it's going to be tough for him, and he got beaten there last year, but I. I think the two, the Paul Nichols horse himself went at it very early last year and the other horse um, came and robbed him, took it off him. Uh, this year I'd say Paul might just use different tactics and the horse seems good. Uh, you know, it's, uh, and we're going back to LA Thompson again, they're like, Galvin de Champ turns up every day, runs a race and he's had many runs this season, five, six, yeah, and he'll have another one. LA Tom's probably the same, you know, so I've often seen horses that are hardy and well able to turn up actually end up being very good horses because the good ones sometimes just get injured. They're not able to turn up every day. And we've seen that hugely this year 
with one horse in particular, you know. So it's um, Stateman turns up every every day and wins all those Grade One, but he mightn't be looked at in the same light as uh, Constitution Hill. But you know, if you're the owner or the trainer or the jockey, they're the ones you want to be on, the ones that can turn up every day and good, hardy, sound horses. I'm always in favour of getting them out while they're sound and well. So many horses miss time because of injury and they're, you know, the, the lifespan of um, a jumping horse, you can get four or five years out of them, but you're probably going to miss one of those through injury and I all believe if the good prize money, run them, take your chance. Willie Ballyburn is obviously double entered at Punchestown. How did you assess him at Cheltenham? Did he do ever you hoped he would? He did, and probably more. Uh, he, he did more, and he hugely impressed me in uh, at Cheltenham. Uh, you know, everyone was raving about him after his couple of wins in Ireland, and I thought, yeah, he's a good novice, but I just thought he was way more than that when, when I saw how he came up the hill in Cheltenham. He, he, he can go any trip, so we'll, we'll leave that till later on. We'll see what way the other races pan out. Is Burn nearly like a perfect racehorse? Is there any flaw in him at this stage? Um, well, in the beginning, he was very keen. Mm. And I think that's why we got, we got beaten the first day Paul wanted to make the running, and I didn't want to because I said, then he's going to be a front runner for the rest of the year. I said, you better teach him something in behind. And it worked. He got beaten, but he's been good ever since. Um, he, he looks like just a real good horse. I mean, what he did. I would be comparing him to sort of Faheen or Vitour or something like that, the sort of performance he put in for me in Cheltenham, you know, it was a real top end performance. And will Tully Hill go to Punchestown? I imagine he will, yeah. He, he's a, a winner around Punchestown, so uh, he was in some form on the gallop yesterday morning, I think. Poor Yuna's arms are about three inches longer, so. And how did you read his run? He was obviously a bit disappointed. He very disappointing, yeah. Paul said he just went out like a light, so I, I, we didn't find anything wrong with him, but um, he, he just wasn't up to the scratch on the day. He worked very well, worked, mm. yeah. Um, he had worked very well now, but you know, it's hard. Uh, we, I don't like working them very hard at home, uh, so it's hard to say that. Bally, sorry, Tully Hill, as I explained yesterday, like he came up the gallop just pulling a roller and he visually he looks very good, whereas Bally Byrne will just come up the gallop like an ordinary horse, he'll settle there, he wouldn't be that keen. Uh, so whatever way, uh, you know, when you, if the two of them work together, Bally Byrne would come up at whatever gallop, but Tully Hill would want to come up twice as fast and visually it looks better, but when push comes to shove, and maybe he left his race at home. Uh, you know, who knows? Adrian hey, Master surprised you this year. He went out in the Supreme. He did. Um, should we have gone for the other race? I don't know. Uh, what's he by? Um, Chiraco. Chiraco, yeah. I think you should be going three miles with him, but he has that bit of speed, but he, and he jumps so fast. And um, yeah, he's going to make some novice chaser next year, I think. He yeah. Yeah, he stayed home from Aintree. We had planned to bring him to Aintree, but um, Mrs. Costello said, going to Punchatown. <laughs> I'm not going to Aintree, so that was it. We were yeah. on about this, sorry, we were on about this in the podcast yesterday. Like, your owners, obviously, that you want to bring the horse over to Britain for the championships. So yeah. Your owners are like, yeah, we're in this for this ride as well. Like. It's amazing, coming home from Aintree, the amount of texts and phone calls I got from my owners to say, if you want to bring my horse to Ayr, Perth, or wherever, we'll do that. You know, so um, the goodwill behind uh, the owners you know, goes back to the team. They're, they're part of the team, and they want to be part of it if it if it's going to happen. You know. Willie, the Abar, the Melbourne Cup, and the County Hurdle. What's your next trick with absurd? <laughs> trying to get him. <laughs> trying to get him qualified for the Melbourne Cup. I think HOS Syndicate really enjoyed their trip, and. I've got to win a listed race, we're placing a group race, so we've got to... I think I... because of his effort last year? No, I don't think so, no. He, he, he could probably get into it, but you've got to get, a, what they call, get over the ballot, yeah. yeah. And um, really you got to 
be placed in a group race. So we've got to sort of find a race, an enlisted race he could win. And I'm thinking of coming back in trip with him to do that, to qualify him. And um, what's he rated on the flat there now? Have you got his rating up? You know, would he be a, the, the Cox Plate horse rather than the Melbourne Cup horse? What's that? That's a mile and a quarter, is it? Yeah. And what's the other race, the mile and a half race? Caulfield Cup. Caulfield Cup, yeah. Maybe Caulfield Cup might be more his cup that. of tea. Yeah, can we yeah. expect to see him in is the two mile lava standard? At Pontestown, absurd. Absurd, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he could go there now or go to, um, uh, or a handicap. Mirazor West is kind of getting back on track again. Who? Mirazor West. Mirazor, yeah. I think change of tactics did a big, big help to him. Um, making the running and using his jumping and using his stride. Uh, I thought he'd going to make a nice novice chaser for next year, you know. Are you going to the two-mile race in Pontestown? Okay. Going to have... Uh, is he in here? He's in the two-mile race. He is, yeah. He po possibly will. He's rated 138. But we won't worry about his rating because he's going chasing in the next year. There's a good chance he'll... I prefer that... I think even he could go the longer race if he wanted to as well. We'll see how he is the week before the race. Majdeburg is finished. Ma yeah, Majdeburg is finished. Uh, so he's done enough for the season. So unfortunately, I'd love to have had him there, but anyhow, he's, he's probably done enough. He's a big horse. You know, he's one to look forward to going jumping next year as well. Practically in the same boat. He's finished for the season as well. Yeah, they're both out on grass, I'd say, as we speak. Yeah. Dancing City, yeah, but he, um, to go up to three miles just makes such a difference to him and uh, we, you know, he was a horse that I thought a lot of when we bought him, but then, you know, he didn't win in Punchestown last year, what beat him? Ballyburn and Slade Steel or whatever you call it, and he was third and we didn't even go for the champion bumper, that was the the already winner's bumper. So that was some hell of a race, wasn't it? You know, those three coming up the straight, avoiding the championship horses, and they might have had a good chance in the champion bumper. Uh, so it was, um, just shows you the quality of racing in Punchestown. Mystical Bower finish for the year? No, I'm hoping he'll go to Punchestown as well. So he will. So still have a good team for Punchestown. Yeah, the celebration chase. Uh, the champion chase in Punchestown and the novice chase. Uh, you can put Gaelic Warrior in any of them, you can put in Fabiano in two of them. <coughs> when would you make up your mind what you're going to do? A uh, lot will depend probably on what happens between now and Punchestown. Um, how important, yeah. how important yeah. that race in Sandown is. Yeah. yeah, it'll be very important and it looks like a big race that we have the winning of, which would be Fantastic. huge. Yeah. Um, it's 170 grand, isn't it? Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, it'd be uh, like looking at it, what are we, 50 grand in front or something like that. So uh, to win that, the, the guy, someone will have to win another feature and another race, probably to pass us, you know. Yeah. As they say, it's, a, it's nearly a three score game now at the moment, isn't it? You know, the, but then, you know, Paul always keeps horses for He's really a master at winning the championship, and he will have his tactical tactics uh, in his head already. I mean, he took out that horse three hundred through five of the of the Grand National to go for the three six five. And stay, um, stay away, Faye. Yeah. Grand National. Yeah. So you know he could win those two and blow us out of the water, and um, you know they're the thing. But you need a lot of luck to do that too. So you do. So we're just hoping that we can get one nice prize and with a bit of luck it'll make it difficult then for Dan and Paul, I think. And Fabiola was A1, just one of those things. Eh? He just wasn't right when he came back from Cheltenham, but uh, so I just gave him a, a break and let him find his feet. So he's bucking and kicking there the last few mornings. So um, he we'll probably do... Or just not letting himself? Or? Just... What, what did you say before that? Was he a bit sore just the way he came down at, at that fence? I know he wasn't right on you and, and he just wasn't himself, but we, there was nothing to treat when we got home. So, you know, sometimes you just give a horse a break and let him recuperate. And he's done that and he's, 
seems in good form now. So, um, you know, he's fitted a flea, one or two bits of work. Uh, he'll be he'll be right, you know. Or uh, you know, Fernie right in the champion chase. Yeah, but he's unfortunately he's couldn't. How is he now? He's back riding, which is great. We got good news for him. So, um, Galway Plate maybe or something. I don't know. But <laughs> Like I, the last thing I want to do you now is get him back riding and then throw him out to grass. So yeah, yeah. I might just keep him going and see what sort of a race, find a race somewhere from now. Oh, he uh, he'd be he'd be three months. Galway is the sort of uh, mm. a, a place where he could go. You know, if you what's his rating? Has he got a? He's probably way too high. Yeah. Hmm? Mm. yeah. Two miles six. What has he a rating over hurdles? <laughs> The, the hundred grand race on the Saturday, you know, but he wouldn't uh, wouldn't let you in those big handicaps. Things you have to have at least is it three or four runs nowadays? Three over here. Yeah, they're ruining all that racing. Aren't they having to have. A <laughs> is Jasmine Devoe in line for the champion bumper? Yeah, he's good. He's put on a nice bit of condition since he came back. I'm very happy the way the whole string has put on condition. Um, a lot of my people were saying that to me. And it's this morning when I was just looking at them, I just had a good look at them all this morning. And I thought, you know what, everyone is right. You know, when you're looking at them every day, you don't see, and the horses are passing so fast and you're trying to figure out what they're going to do. And the, there's some horses who are poor, you might have a second look at and say, we'll do less. But um, this morning, Patrick took all the gallops and I just watched. And uh, just looking at the, the coats they have on them, looking at the amount of flesh they've put on since Cheltenham, uh, I was really pleased. Is that kind of the way you train them to kind of get there at this time of the year? It's long season, I suppose. Well, we do. We probably concentrate from before Christmas to uh, April, May. Uh, you know, sometimes we might go off to France in May. We'll see what's there. There's a huge prize money there. And it's, it's a nice nice place to spend a weekend as well. So. Do you have anything earmarked for France? Sir? Uh, I'm, a lot of the hurdlers, rather than the chase, I won't bring Gallop in the Champ, as much as I'd love to win the French Gold Cup, the Grand Steep, I won't bring him. Um, but, you know, we, the hurdlers, possibly, um, Simon Muneer is, you know, maybe he'll bring in Perry Pass for the champion hurdle over there. Um, you could look at Lossie Mouth, but I don't think I will this year. She, it was part of the plan early in the season, but I think not now. Um, a lot of those... Uh, probably ones towards the top of the handicap uh, rather than the real good novices. Last event's in the champion hurdle, will she go for the mayor's race? Or? She will go for the mayor's race. That's at this point in time, and we, we let the state men go on the champion hurdle. Are you and delighted it, with her, Chelsea? Hmm? Are you happy with her, Chelsea? Oh, absolutely delighted with her, yeah. Mm. Absolutely. So, um, you know, she looks like she's coming on song for or bid for the champion hurdle next year. You know, what, uh, a lot of the, all those horses have to stay sound, you know. It's lovely thinking you have two or three for the champion hurdle, and maybe Constitution Hill will be coming back, but um, they've all got to get there, as we've seen, that they don't, it's not given that you get there, you know. When you look at her, the size of her, she's about 16'2", which you, you look at her galloping down the track and you say she's a little grey mare, 16 hands, and when you actually stand into her, I think the first time I saddled was probably in Cheltenham last year, the first time I stood into it, I, I got a fright. I was surprised. And Gallop in the Champ is another one. He's seven, 17, one and a half, I think, or something. And to look at him, he doesn't. And that's a real sign of a good horse. When you look at a horse and you think he's just a normal size, and then you stand in and they're much higher. It just shows how well proportioned they are, that the, he doesn't look tall, so everything is in proportion. And when you're buying a horse or looking at a horse, and if you can notice that about them. That's to me. Uh, take them every day of the week. Daisy ran great the two days. She did. She did. She she has some engine, she haven't she? Pulled very. Hard. I mean, she pulled so hard. Um, we're going to have to change a few things about her uh, because if we can get her to settle and race, um, she is a real, a real machine. I'd say. Is she always going to be the, the hurdling type, do you think, or could she...? No, she'll go, I'd say she's big enough to go chasing. And maybe, you know, those horses settle way better over fences, don't they? Yeah. Just how much of a buzz did you get out of the weekend? I presume you're still getting a buzz off the 
<laughs> yeah, well, any time you win a national, it's special. I mean, it was back, it was good enough winning the races we won, and um, but then to top it off uh, with uh, I Maximus just uh, extraordinary. So uh, you know, to win a national is you're on a. I remember the last time we won it with Hedgehunter, like I was on a high for the whole year, and I didn't realise how much of a high I was on until whatever horse won it in two thousand six, mm -hmm. and then. We weren't the trainer of the winner of the national yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was gone, you know. We we were the, we were the yeah. we, we were the national trainer, and now we're not anymore. So um, now you are. again, yeah. yeah. Could he be a Gold Cup horse next year? I think so. I I've been thinking he's a Gold Cup horse all along, but I've been saying I think before the race that we don't know how good he is, because he won his maiden chase with the Irish National from an extraordinary ride from Paul. Then he came out and won the Drinmore Grade One. I thought the way he did it, but what he did to Vanilla in the Bobby Joe, I'm thinking he's going to be clear favourite for the national. I can't understand how he wasn't clear favourite from that day on. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if we weren't in the race, Vanilla would have hardened his favourite, yeah. and he was what 11 lengths behind us or something? Yeah, yeah. It it blew me away now to the performance he put in there that day on that ground. And just left a horse like Vanillier dead, you know. He's very quirky, though, isn't he? Like in terms of his even his action and everything is a bit like. Oh yeah, to watch him coming yeah. at you. Yeah. Yeah. And even yesterday, well, I presume he was a typical authorized, like he was yeah. Kind of enjoying. Yeah. Yeah. We were afraid of our lives, you know. <laughs> we we brought down Gallopin and uh, statement. statement and what Jasmine, Jasmine, Jasmine Devoe, Devoe, and the three of them were like kids' ponies, and we were down in the car park at seven o'clock with kids running in around them, signing autographs, getting pictures taken. But your man yesterday, like we had security, our own staff, all around his back end, and once or twice coming down the street, that oh Jesus, he's not going to fall over here. And you know, a horse can do that with shoes on on the tarmac. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I was worried about it. Yeah. yeah. And you know, he then in front of the hotel, the last few minutes, he just reared up and we said, right. It's a great picture. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and we we got pictures in front of every shop and pub and. <laughs> Well, that's uh, Caroline Orson and Mo, so I get them done now and, and give them to the people. But you know, bring everyone into the. Um, everyone's got to buy into, buy it and be made, today, like. be made part of it. You know, yeah. so. That's where I got the name. Yeah. <laughs> He's well named, isn't he? <laughs> He's a character, isn't he? Patrick, thanks very much for having us all down this morning. Um, I suppose first to reflect on I am Maximus. Brilliant win of the Grand National. Uh, sure, it was a magic result. Uh, I thought Paul gave him an absolutely fantastic ride. Scraped paint all the way. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't fancy him. I, di I didn't think he'd get into a rhythm jumping. Um, but, you know, it's obviously a different test now. And I think maybe the way the race turned into a bit of a sprint really suits him. You know, he, I've never seen a horse finish a, a national as fast. And do you think Paul is key to getting the best out of the horse? He's obviously very popular. Uh Look, Paul, Paul definitely. I mean, I think Paul this season is just riding at the very top of his game. But, you know, Jody McGarvey won a, won a grade one on him as well. So I'm yeah. sure Jody might have something to say about that. And it brought you right into the UK trainers, trainers title mix. How heavily do you think you're going to focus on the UK in the next few weeks? Very heavily, yeah. It's going to be, um, you know, I think we have 33 entries in air and, and we'll be running plenty of those. Um, we're going to have entries in Perth and a few other places during the week. And then on to Sandown again, um, like in 2016, when we went over with Underso and um, uh, Broomgrove Mag went over. So uh, I'd imagine Willie's going to be sending, you know, one or two of the, the kind of rerouting the Grade 1 horse and punch them maybe to the Celebration Chase. Yeah, I suppose El Fabiolo and Gaelic Barrier are kind of obvious ones. Would you have a preference for them, Michael? I mean, I think either, be, either be, would do the job. I mean, look, obviously, John Bond is going to be a tough nut wherever he goes, but perhaps they might take the longer break and go to Punchdown. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I, I imagine one of those will probably travel. Uh, both of them, uh, both of them will come out of Cheltenham fine. El Fabiola was stiff for a few days, but he's back in full work now and uh, we'll make a decision near the time. Very good. Um, and I think you are mentioning targeting the UK quite heavily. Will that affect Paul's title chances in any way, do you think? I don't think so majorly. I mean, um, I think we're still going to have plenty of ammunition for Punchestown. Um, you know, it might cost him a winner or two, which I suppose could be could be crucial. But it's going to be fascinating viewing the boys' roast. <laughs>